you have not asked us to seek you in vain and this is our confidence this afternoon when a man goes to see the king he leaves with the goodies of the palace but this afternoon we have gathered around the king of all kings and we know for sure that we shall not leave the same way we came Lord, synchronize every word to meet every need. That is words we will hear this afternoon make us into what you desire us to be. And this afternoon I yield myself to the influence of your spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit, do as you wish. Receive hearing heart, knowing heart, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every outside force that is not of the Christ. And I decree your activity will not prosper in this place. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Hallelujah. Can you shout glory for me? Are you ready? All right, take your seat. Let's ride and go. Woo, glory to God. Do a job for me. Welcome your neighbor. Say welcome to BCC. All right. I have the privilege of bringing you God's word this afternoon. I always count it a joy and a privilege to preach. And it's the truth. You may not know. I don't think I take it as a right to, to preach uh, because I'm the presiding bishop. No, 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 no. It's always a privilege for me to bring God's word. You know why? Because I know that God has a system of removing anyone that is extinct in his agenda. Did you hear me? By the grace of God, I prophesied to people, general overseers, and I told them God said I should say to you, that if you don't do this and do this, it's taking you out. You are going home to be with the Lord. So if I profess that to people, <laughs> it gives me a consciousness that God can do without any man and God can just take it. I'm done with you. Or you're not aligning with my agenda. So, guy, go and sleep. So while the whole world is crying, oh, what happened, what happened? Everyone is rejoicing that he came home. How bit he came home too early. Praise God. So for me, I always count it a privilege um, to be a custodian of God's light, of revelation, and um, the opportunity, opportunity to preach it to God's people. Whatever I'm preaching today is not a message to Irene or just a message to Believers Clarity Conference. It's a message to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. I'll start by saying to you that God's, God has integrity. Say God has integrity. God has integrity. He has integrity. By that, I'm saying God will do what he says he will do. It doesn't matter how long it seems. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. God has integrity. God has integrity. He keeps his word. There are times when you have to do your part so as to make sure that God's integrity is seen to the whole world. But um, even when you are not doing your part, God will still play his part. God has integrity. As we prepared for this conference, I was looking at my note, and I was reading some of the things God said to me 20 years ago. Now, some of these things, the one that stood out for me the most um, was the fact that um, he, he said to me, and I want to read it, he said, I will walk with you on the wings of angels in the prophetic. You will see like angels. You will see on that spectrum of light. Now, calculate 20 years ago. Now, when the Lord said this to me, I didn't know what the prophetic was. That's the truth. I didn't know because the ministry I was then, there was nothing like that. 
Actually, the first time I knew about the prophetic, because my pastor appointed me, I said, you, you are called to be a prophet, to get out of this ministry. You have no place here. You can't function here. That was, like, that was when I began to search. But before then, the Lord has said this to me. Now, I didn't know how that would happen. But I've seen his words come to pass. It doesn't matter how dark it seems. May I, may I instruct you? Do not ever laugh at a man God has spoken to. Don't. Many years down the line, you will wish you never did. Don't. I don't care what his mistakes may be. I don't care how things may look so bad. Don't ever laugh at a man God spoke to. Don't. Because in the end, you wouldn't want to position yourself as the enemy of God. Don't. Now, I know those that laughed, laughed at these things. I know those that laughed at these things. When I told, I know, I remember I told people then, of years later, and they laughed at he now by the grace of God I'm their prophet praise God praise God and if they don't follow the protocol the prophetic I won't even talk to them you know what I mean even though they've been my friends for years no you can't call me I have friends I just come me um, Bishop what's up um, uh, yeah. what, what's the Lord saying in this direction um, will I be the one to win this election? I said, that's not how to talk to a prophet. You can talk to your pastor like that, but I'm a prophet. Aha. Uh-huh. Follow the Saul example, the Saul's example. Aha. Uh-huh. So when you are ready to hear from the Lord, do the needful. Praise God. Now, these were those that I spoke, that I told about these things many years ago, and I said, you are deceiving yourself. You better carry your Bible and <laughs> don't laugh. At a man God spoke to. Praise God. Okay? I'm starting the series with you in this BCC and it's titled Of Saviors and of Kings. Of Kings and Saviors. Rather, of Kings and Saviors. Of Kings and Saviors. I believe God's word will come strong for you today. You will receive direction, you will receive clarity. In the name of Jesus. Okay. I have pastors in front of me. Let me not ask pastors questions. Um, can I ask somebody, anyone that is bold right there, can you tell me why God created you? If you're sure, just stand up for me. You know why God created you. Or why did God create a man? Let's look at man. You're sure you know why God created man? Can I see your hand? You know why? Please tell me. I will hear you from there. God created man for intimacy. Thank you, sir. Please sit. Okay? God created man so that he can have intimacy. If that answer is 100% correct, it will mean that God lacked intimacy before he created man. Are you following me? All right. Any other person? You can go ahead and speak, sir. All right. Glory to God. This, this people have I found, and it shall show for my praise. Okay. So, the has created us to show for his praise. Okay. God created man to show for his praise. So it would mean that if that's the sole reason God created man, it would mean that no one was showing forth God's praise. Are you following me? Any other person? Go ahead. Just speak. I like it. I'd like to hear it. Just speak. If I've taught you and you make a mistake, you're in trouble. <laughs> so if you better don't get put yourself in the trouble, you won't like it. Please, go on. <laughs> the guy is sat down. <laughs> All right. Can I hear you? To have dominion. dominion. God created man to 
have dominion. To have dominion. Good. God created man to have dominion. Hmm. 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 Okay. If God created man to have dominion, it would mean that um, it would mean that God did not have dominion in a particular territory. Right? Okay. I saw another hand. Tell me. Go ahead. I like it. Now, I'm the kind of teacher you can ask questions. So if you have questions during my class, write mm. it down. I'm not afraid of any Bible questions. Go ahead, sir. Um, God, oh, created, God, Never. God, God created the heavens and the earth for man. So he said, let man rule over the work of his hands. Okay. So the reason God created man is to rule over the work of his hands. Okay. I think they're all tilting in one direction now. Any other person? Let me take that as the last one. The Christian Bible says, uh, God created everything for his own pleasure. God created all things for his own pleasure, including yes, man. Including man. I like that part. Good. So, God created man for his pleasure. The first person, I can't remember the first person. The first person, what did you say? Intimacy. <laughs> Intimacy. Intimacy. Is the farthest from for me for, from the answer is the farthest. Is the farthest. Because if God created man for intimacy, God does not need intimacy. It is man that needs intimacy. Are you following? If God created man for intimacy, um, where will man have intimacy? I thought everything everyone was in Christ or in God. So if man, if God created man to have intimacy, so man is going to have intimacy with God in God. Are you following me? If you had said worship, intimacy happens in the place of worship, uh, that would have passed the little. Now, just follow my thought. None is really wrong. None is totally right. Now, if God created man to declare his praise, like you quoted scripture, and if that's all, if that's all the reason God created man, and God created man for his own pleasure, perfect answer. But the next question would be, how will man show forth his praise? Or how will man give God pleasure? That should be the next question. Am I right? How will man give God pleasure? Because if I say, you're created to give me pleasure now, well, how, will, how will you just stand there like, <laughs> like a dolly? <laughs> yeah, I'm giving Bishop pleasure. Oh my God. <laughs> pleasure. No. There must be something that is communicating pleasure to me. Am I right? Genesis chapter number 1 verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in the image of God, According to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, say the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now follow carefully. God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Let us make man in our image and likeness. It means something will characterize the man God, God made. And that thing is what? Dominion. Are you following me? That thing is what? Dominion. When we say someone or something is created in, a, in, in the image and likeness of that person, many times you look at it that that image that has been created, we should have all the functions and the ability of the man, of, of, of the creator. Are you following me? So if I say let's create another tablet in this image and likeness, it will mean that that tablet should be able to do all that these tablets can do, right? And it should look like this tablet exactly. Are you following me? So it's like a copy. Am I right? A copy. Image and likeness will mean a copy. However, however, Adam was not the copy of God. So when you visit Genesis 1, 26 again and you look at it carefully, you will understand what image and likeness means. 
image and likeness in Genesis 1.26 simply means that they will have one or some of my abilities. Are you following me? The semicolon there tells you. It says, let them have what? Dominion. So, to say a man was created in God's image and likeness is to say that man has dominion like God. Because image and likeness means that he is like him in one way. Are you following me? But man is not like God in every way. You know you are man. Man is not omniscient. Man is not omnipotent. Man is not omnipresent. Am I right? So he is not in God's image and likeness in totality. However, there is a function of God that has been replicated in man. So man can say, I have the image and likeness of God because I can exercise dominion like God. Are you following me, church? Good. So, it will mean that the man God would create will have dominion. Dominion. What is dominion? You can call it different things. It may mean different things to different people. But generally speaking, it means that you are never subject to the element and system that is not of God. It means you are not subject to the element and system of where you live. It means to always be in charge. It will mean mastery. It will mean having the ability to get the outcome you desire per time. So when you look at something and say, this is how I want this thing, this thing to turn out. And it turns out that way. It looks like you are walking in what? In dominion. Sharp dominion. Good. However, when you look around, it's not looking like the experiences we see around doesn't look like the experience of the man spoken of in Genesis chapter number 1 verse 26. But look at this carefully. Follow me. I'm on the journey. If God's intent in Genesis 1 26 was dominion and God is the same yesterday, today and what? It will mean that God's intent today is still what? Is still what? Good. God's original intent is dominion. I wouldn't want to say what's dominion because it's still dominion. So in creation, God gave man the ability to dominate. Now, you may not like what I'm saying. Because many times, people don't like the things that stretch them. Or the things that make them look like, okay, they need to have a change of mind or a change of thinking. But the truth is that your greatest desire, whether you like it or not, is dominion. That's your greatest desire. You may not know that, that is what it is, but that's the name that is called. You don't like the life that is subject to sickness and poverty. I know you don't like it. Even though some of you have called it your cross. I know you don't like it. I know you don't like the life of deprivation and, and, uh, and lack and scarcity. I, don't, I know you don't like it. Though some religious demons have taught you otherwise. And you have believed that okay, it's fine, it's fine. We don't all have to succeed. Am I right? Is it true? <laughs> we don't all have to succeed. That's what some people think. Why do you do extra jobs? Why do you work extra hours? That might not be so applicable in this environment. But you know, your brother and cousin abroad, they do overtime. Why do you do overtime? Why do you work extra hours? Why are you looking for a better job? Why are you looking for a better job? Why are you, why, you know, I, I'm so, I'll, I'll share just once as, as a teacher. Recently, while, as we prepared for BCC, I looked at all, all hiring workers. And I found out that none of hiring workers is actually jobless. Except one that is on a training, he's, he's gotten a job, he's on a training, he's going to resume sometime next week. And last year, more than at, at about 50% of them were looking for jobs. 
Praise God. And none of them. It's either they are entrepreneurs or they have one job or the other and they are doing. Now, I'm so excited about that. That's like answered prayers. But that's not where I'm going. However, they still come to me and say, sir, that 200K is not okay. It's not, can, can I get a job 500K per month? Can we use dominion? Praise God. <laughs> I'm serious. Can we use dominion? Now, that desire for a better pay is dominion. That is crying out for exp- expression. I'm telling you the truth. That desire for a better life, you know you want a better life. Even if you are in Nigeria, you know you want 24 hour supply. If NEPA cannot give you, if patient cannot give you, you should have a generating plan that switches on and off per time. Uh, hello? Am I speaking to angels? <laughs> Don't you like it? <laughs> you like it. Don't deceive yourself. You like it. Praise God. So don't act religious when things like these are spoken of. Like, ah, no, no, let's just stay with um, Jesus is coming back, eternal life. That is. <laughs> Praise God. Now, because of these desires, many times God's blessing in your life has mostly manifested as in, in the area of finances. Because many times you are focused on just getting your finances better. Look at yourself many times. Go, go check your prayer request list or if you have your goals. Almost everything on your goal sheet is surrounded by what? Money. Am I the only one? It's surrounded by money. For some of you, if one million dollars get into your account today, your goal sheet, you tear it off. I've met the goal for 10 years. Until you come to church on Sunday and I say, what about your spiritual goals? And then, eh, okay, are there spiritual goals too? So I can... Now, so because of this, there's a Christianity that is common around here, which is a Christianity of Lord meet my need. Lord meet my need. It's not so accurate. And I will take you there. To get the best of this sermon, we need to first, of this teaching, we need to first lay some foundation about the things that happened in Genesis 1. So I'd like you to take note, right, if you can. And you should. So number one, God's original intent for man is dominion. You can call that authority, you can call it mastery, you can call it uh, rulership, you can call it kingship. That's God's original intent. Are you following me? Number two, God did not create Christians. He created rulers. He created kings. When he told man, man have dominion. Anytime you hear the word dominion, the next word that should come to your mind is kingship. Next thing that should come to your mind is kingdom. I know you want to be a good Christian, but God didn't create Christian. God didn't create convert. No. God didn't start with the religion. God didn't start with the church. He started with the kingdom. <laughs> so God started with man and told man to rule a kingdom. God started with a ruler. So in God's own mind, the earth as you see it should be proliferated with kings, not Christians. Follow me. I know I've not taught you like this before, but that's why it's BCC. Follow me. The next thing you should note is that man's singular purpose is to be God's extension on earth. God's extension on earth as a king because that was his original intent. You can now call that purpose giving God pleasure. You can call that purpose giving God praise. That is how we will give God praise. That is how we will give God pleasure. 
And God proved this by giving a man, but God proved it by giving a man a seat in heaven. He gave him a seat at his right hand, at the right hand. The person seated at the right hand of God, the Father in heaven, is a man. Say he's a man. A man. He's a man. He's a man. And that seat was vacant until a man ascended to heaven. Is a man. And the word right hand of the father that simply means the position of all dominion, of all authority. Are you following me? That's the meaning of right hand of the father. Tighten your seat belt. Huh? You're about to experience some turbulence in religion. Follow me. So on the earth, he gave man a domain to rule. In heaven, he gave him a seat to rule from. The next thing you should understand about this concept, remember the title of my son? Of kings and saviors. Number four is that dominion is in levels. Dominion is in levels, and there's a way dominion is exercised. And on that same note, man was not the only object of creation that God gave dominion. No. I guess you didn't know that. I'll show you. Genesis 1.22. By the time I'm done with this series, you will make so much progress like you've not made in five years. I said you will make so much progress like you've not made in five years. Genesis 1, 22. And God blessed them. Now, he's talking about the animals. And God blessed them saying, be what? And what? Take note. God told animals be fruitful and multiply. Oh, did they? Now go to Genesis 1 26. Do 27 or 28. I want to show you something. Do 28 for me. Good. Look at it. I said 28. Do 28 for me. Good. And God blessed them. 26 said he gave them dominion. And God blessed them and said to them, What did he say to them? What did he say to them? Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Take note of it. This is God's description and expression of dominion. Dominion is in levels. How will I exercise dominion? How will I express dominion? I will be what? Fruitful. What next will I do? I will multiply. Then what, after that I will what? Fuel the head or replenish the head. Next, I will do what? Subdue it. The same thing he spoke to man, he spoke to animals. So he said to animals, he said, be what? Fruitful and multiplied. So he gave animals two levels of dominion. He gave man four levels of dominion. Thank you, Jesus. Next. Dominion speaks of a kingdom, not a church. Dominion speaks of a kingdom, not even the ecclesia. Dominion speaks of a kingdom, not a denomination. I'm slowing down because you're writing. Next on that. In understanding this concept, the next thing you should know is that the fall of man was not the religious fall. The fall of man was not a sin he communicated in the workers' department and it was excommunicated or Bishop said, go and transcribe or summarize. He's not. 
The sin of man was not a religious fall. It was a positional fall. From a son, he became God's enemy. Romans 5.10 tells me that, that we were enemies of God. It was a position of fall. However, there's a concept that has been taught, which I do not totally agree with, respectfully speaking, and is that a man also fell from his position of dominion. Have you heard that before? And if he did, if man actually fell from his position of dominion, it should be obvious. How should it be obvious? It should mean that the man should not be able to exercise dominion over the elements of the earth until he's restored to his position of dominion, right? But man still did. In the fall, man should not be able to exercise dominion at all in any way. But man still can. Then why would you say man lost his dominion? No. Man did not lose his dominion. Man just chose someone else to serve with his dominion. Are you here with me? Tanivan or Tutti? Man just chose someone else to serve with his dominion. That's what man did. So in the fall of man, man enthroned, so, man enthroned someone else as his lord. In the fall of man, man enthroned a lord over himself. In the fall of man, man enthroned the devil. As his Lord, not his God, his Lord. Elohim, the God of the nations, the God of heaven and earth, was still his God, but another being became his Lord, his master. How did I why did I say that? I don't just talk. Romans 6 16. Do you not know that those that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are what? You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or what? Obedience leading to righteousness. In the obedience of the devil and the disobedience to God, what did man do? Man kept God as his God, but he kept the, made the devil his what? His Lord. Hence, there was not a loss of dominion. The problem was just the fact that now my dominion serves another being. Are you following me? So in the fall of Adam, okay, let's go for a little deeper than there. In the fall of Adam, however, why is it that man could not exercise dominion at the level at which he should exercise it if he did not lose his dominion? In the fall, sin and death kinged over Adam. Kinged, allow me to use the word kinged. Sin and death reigned over Adam. Romans 5, 12 to 14. I hope I'm not too theological. I hope I'm not too theological. You're not answering me. I am, right? Am I blessing you? Good. Follow me carefully. There's a, way I'm, there's a place I'm taking you. When you get there, you will know. But we won't get there today. We just got it. We'll get a bus stop today. Then we'll get another bus stop tomorrow. Then on Monday, we will get close to the destination. Then Monday evening, we'll land. Are you following me? Good. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and death spread to all men because all were sin. Verse 13. For unto the law sin was in the world. But sin is not what? Imputed when there is no law. So he's saying sin was there but because there was no law sin was not imputed, was not accounted. Nevertheless, the word nevertheless here means despite that. Yet, though sin was not imputed, because normally, follow me carefully, follow, follow me carefully, sin ought to be imputed for death to reign. Because it is sin that produces death. Are you following me? It is sin that gives birth to death. 
But that was such a king that even when there was no law to give him the right to act, death acted despite. Are you following me? So the, the author was like, this is the order. Sin, not imputed. So if sin is not imputed, there should be no death. How, how do you, a man sinned, but there's no law that says he has sinned. Do you ever jail him? You don't jail him. So that was what he was saying. His sin was there. We can see sin, but there was no law to jail this man. But death acted all the same. Nevertheless. And that's why the next word after death is king. Reigned. The word reign means so king. So death acted like a king. You know what a king does? You know the Bible says where the word of a king is, there is what? And that's not where I'm going. And who shall ask him what he what? What he do it? So the position of a king is that he can't be questioned. Oh yeah, it So death acted like one. <laughs> Nevertheless, death reigned. Reigned from Adam to Moses. Hush. Death was not told to kill Adam. It was not told to kill Moses. But death reigned all the same. So in the fall of Adam, Adam had a king. Woo. Are you following me? Are you following me? Mm. We are not there yet. Mm -hmm. Adam had a king. Death reigned over her. Oh, glory to Jesus. Death reigned. Death king over her. Let's, let's understand the fall. Let's understand the fall. In Romans 12, 5 12. 5 12, right? The Bible says, therefore, just through one man's one man sin, what? Well, just as through one man's sin entered the world. How did sin enter the world? Say the answer. How did sin enter the world? How did sin enter the world? How did sin enter the world? Good. The world through one man. So who is the first sinner in the world? What? Lucifer? Angel? Who? Man. Man. That's what the Bible says. Don't, don't believe in stories they tell you. Believe the Bible. Tell you never believe the Bible. <laughs> Just through one man, sin entered the world. And how did death enter? Through sin. Did you get it now? Remember what I was saying earlier? Death will not come without what? Without sin. And through us, death spread to all men because all what? Sinned. How did all sin? All sin through the sin of Adam. Adam being the head of a race. Are you following me? The way some people have experienced or, or suffered the, 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 the iniquity of their father's sin or the punishment of their father's sin. So one of the immediate reason, one of the immediate outcome of the fall was that mankind was separated from what? From God. And this separation from God is called death. So man could not have fellowship. Fellowship was what? Broken. So that time when um, man could talk to God was not there anymore. That time when God could talk to man was not there anymore. Follow me carefully. You remember I told you earlier that God did not start with Christians. He started with what? With kingdom, with kings. So that time when God, when man could walk up to God and say, God, we want to take the mountain of, um, of Zarephath, we want to take the mountain of whatever else, we want to, I'm thinking we should establish this on this mountain. Those conversations that man should ask God or have with God, man could not have it with God anymore because fellowship was what? Broken. Understand that the dominion of man was to serve the purposes of God. I say that again. The dominion of man was to serve the purposes of God. But that time of fellowship was broken. 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 However, 
Because man is essentially spirit. Every man fellowships with something. Communion is never non-existent for any man. For man to survive, he must commune with the spirit. Whether he knows it or not. Whether he approves it or not. Did you hear me? So as it were, when it looks like Adam was not fellowshipping with God, Adam was fellowshipping with someone else. You too, before you started acknowledging your communion with God as a believer, there was something you were fellowshipping with before you got born again. You may not know. The fellowship may not be so deep. But man, because he's essentially spirit, must commune with spirit. So, this is what happened to Adam. Adam did not have that communion with God. So, Adam could not walk in the purposes of God in the use of his dominion. But Adam was communing with another spirit. So, somehow, Adam was exercising his dominion to fulfill the counsel of another spirit. Are you following? The way to believe this is that, listen carefully to me, every knowledge in the world was communicated to man by a spirit. Every knowledge. Every knowledge. All the things Adam knew, God told him. The one God did not tell him, the devil told her and she told him. And every body of every body, B O D Y, every body of knowledge today, I don't care what you call it, science, philosophy, everything, a spirit revealed it to a man. It's either a man taught a man, but the first custodian of it, it was revealed to him by a spirit. Man does not have the ability to discover knowledge by himself, except with the help of a spirit. So, in the fall of man, death became a reality. Every creation was subject to the same thing. You know why? Because the head of the creation was experiencing the same thing. How did I know that animals, plants, everything was subject to, to the same thing? Romans 12, 5, Romans 5 tells me. Sorry, Romans 8, 22 tells me. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with bed pants together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruit of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groans within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the word adoption. What's the adoption? The redemption of our body. So lions are waiting for redemption. Plant kingdom are waiting for redemption. And man too is waiting for redemption. Why would they need redemption if there was no fall? Thank you, Jesus. Another thing that happened in the fall of man is that the fall of man made man selfish. That's very obvious, right? All right. You don't need, you don't need Bible verses for that. You know, your uncle has money he has not given you. Your brother has money he has not given you. <laughs> Even your best friend has money he has not given you. One day someone came to me and said, Bishop, I asked my best friend for money. He didn't give me. He went to buy a car. And when I confronted her, I said, is it your money? And that's not like a, what do you call that kind of answer? Selfish. Is 
your money. So the fall of man made man selfish. By that he made man self-conscious. So man thinks about the things he needs alone. The best of them thinks about the things he needs first. Before he thinks about his creator's need. The best of men. However, when a man now comes to God, when he comes to Christ, when he receives the life of Christ, you still see the weakness, this selfish weakness in his fallen soul. Because his soul is not redeemed in redemption. His soul is not saved in redemption. So you still see the effect of attire. Let me say this to you. In the fall of man, his spirit, soul, and body fell. In the redemption of man, only his spirit was redeemed. <laughs> so here, here is a man, spiritually redeemed, but there's a struggle in the soul and there's a problem in the body. So you see the man, you look at him. He has come to Christ, but he's still motivated by his weaknesses. He has come to Christ, but he still desires that his need be met first. So any church he wants to go is a church that will meet his need. The Christian fellowship he wants to be part of is the one that gives him solution. You know, sometimes when I talk to a pastor friend, they say, ah, don't worry, Bishop, just give men solution. When you give them solution, they will come. I say, I understand. It's just a selfish need of man. Glory to God. Not done with the fall. In the fall, in the fall, man gave himself up to another kind of knowledge. In the fall, man gave himself up to another kind of knowledge. So Romans 1.28 tells us that since they did not see it fit to acknowledge God, to retain the knowledge of God, God gave them up to a what? A debased spirit. So to do those things which are not fitting. So man, man embraces another kind of knowledge. We will get into that. This kind of knowledge and ideology. We are going to get into it later. In this fall thing, let me hand it here. In the fall of man, another kingdom was created. Another kingdom was created. Because if man was still going to be king and he was not king in Eden, if man was still going to be king and he was not king in God's palace, serving God's purpose, he had to be king in another territory. In the fall of man, another kingdom was created. Another kingdom was established. First Corinthians 1, Colossians 1 rather, Colossians 1, 12 to 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saint in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. The word power there is not, is not um, dunamis. The word power there is exosia, which means authority, dominion. He has delivered us from the dominion of what? Of darkness. That's the name of a kingdom. And has conveyed us or translated us into where? The kingdom, the reign, the dominion of his dear son, of the son of his love. So, in the fall of man, another kingdom was created. And when a kingdom was created, an agenda must be written, a philosophy must be propagated, laws must be enacted. Ideologies must be sown like seeds for that kingdom to stand. The strength of a nation is not its army. Hear me carefully. The strength of a nation is not its wealth. The strength of a nation is the strength of its ideologies and philosophies.
The strength of a nation is not in his army. The strength of a nation is in how well they can propagate a pattern of thinking. So if another kingdom was created, then these things would have been done. Ideologists, philosophers, a pattern of thinking, educational system, all of that must have been done. There's the good news of salvation. Salvation took care of sin, death, and the direct effect of death, of sin rather. The salvation is deliverance from sin and all of its effect, which includes poverty, sickness, uh, sin, death, and all of that. So salvation took care of these things. However, there's something salvation did not take care of. Salvation did not destroy the kingdom of darkness. Follow me. Think with me. I'm coming from a level of thinking. I'm coming from a level of light. Salvation did not destroy the kingdom of darkness. It only took some out of the kingdom of darkness. But the kingdom of darkness is still there. The reign of darkness is still on. Am I right or wrong? Or don't you know that the reign of darkness is still on? It's still on. It took care of sin. It took care of death. It took care of um, the devil. But it didn't take care of, it didn't take care of his kingdom. And you know the good thing about kingdom? Is that the kingdom is not destroyed when you destroy the king. Oh yeah. A kingdom does not end when the king dies. Provided ideologies, philosophies, systems and what? Are in place. So in death, in his sin, in his death and resurrection, oh, he destroyed the devil. Oh, he destroyed the serpent. He crushed his head. He did all of that. Glory to God, he did, but his kingdom is still there. Because his kingdom is determined, or the strength of his kingdom is determined by the ideologies, the philosophies of that system in operation. So the church rejoice. We do a joy dance. Oh, glory to God. Ah, yeah. Joy. We do all of that. Glory to God. The devil is defeated. Oh, hallelujah. I'm now born again. I'm translated. You're not in the spirit, though. I'm translated from the kingdom of darkness. Pam, pam. I am no, 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 no. Go is a God. Oh, he died for me. Oh, no, no, no. When you are done with your joy dance, the kingdom of darkness is still in place. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! I'm teaching good. <laughs> it's still in place. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, because of the reign of the kingdom of darkness that is still in place, it looks like the effect of salvation is not seen. Have you heard statements like this from enemies of the church? That's what I call them. With all the churches in Nigeria, why is Nigeria not changed? Have you heard something like that before? Or you have even said something like that before? <laughs> With all the churches in this country, in Africa, why is this? Happening? Don't worry. Their life is worse abroad, if you don't know. It's worse. We, we don't count the numbers of society they count. I'm sorry you guys are watching from abroad. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. I'm just explaining it something. Praise God. We don't count the numbers of society they count. We don't count the numbers of gun debt they count. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Our own problem is pothole, light, and, um, and kidnapping. You see better up. 
better when well, you cannot go to shop right uh, with peace of mind. One kid will just come start shooting everywhere. Uh, praise God. And so they are not better. They are not. They are not. So it looks like men are saved or salvation has been announced. Men are saved, but it looks like we can't see the effect of salvation. Something is missing. There were things left undone. The message that brought of salvation is what we call the gospel of peace. Or we call it the gospel of reconciliation. Many times you call it the gospel, but you're wrong when you call it the gospel. I submit to you respectfully. The word gospel is good news. And the word gospel is simply a qualifier. It must qualify something. When I say this is the gospel. Gospel of reconciliation. Gospel of salvation. Gospel of grace. Gospel of pre peace. All these things I just mentioned, they mean the same thing. But there's another gospel that you may not have read in your Bible. Shall I show you? Matthew 4.23 And Jesus went about all Galilee preaching in their synagogue preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of rulership. The gospel of dominion. <laughs> the gospel of kingship. Now, no man can teach this better than me, right? <laughs> because on the 14th of June, 2011, the Lord appeared to me. He said, I've called you to undertake this task. Go and restore men to their position as kings where they reign in life. It's my mandate. Hallelujah. He says he went about, he says he went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. So the gospel is a qualifier. The gospel of what? Then let's go and preach the gospel. What gospel are we going to preach? Are you following me? What gospel are we going to preach? Just gonna, let's go and preach the gospel. What gospel? Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Now, when you look at the gospel, you must understand the gospel from these sides. The gospel of grace. The gospel of reconciliation. The gospel of peace. He said, let's go and preach. Our feet should be shared with the preparation of the gospel of what? Of peace. All of these gospels that I mentioned, is that, they mean the same thing actually. They actually preceded the gospel of the kingdom. Because the gospel was not revealed, the gospel of peace was not revealed in the New Testament. It was revealed in the old. Am I right? You didn't know? Abraham had the gospel. Praise Jesus. Good. Paul told us. It was just fully brought to light in the New Testament. The gospel of grace is not an end to itself. It's the means to the end. The end is the gospel of the kingdom. Don't believe me yet. Just follow me. Don't be, I, know it's, I know you're shocked. Like, what's, what's, what's Bishop saying? But don't believe me yet. Just listen. That's the best thing you can do. The gospel of peace, the gospel of grace is not the hand itself. Oh, it's all about the gospel of grace. I'm just going to shout grace, 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 grace. Yes, yeah, that's all you're going to produce. You're going to produce saved men, but you're going to have the kingdom of darkness reigning everywhere. The gospel of grace is not the hand. It's the means to the hand itself. And if this is true, the last point on my list there is the purpose of Jesus. The purpose of Jesus is to restore men to their position as kings, which is also my mandate. Look at it. 
Revelation 1, 5 and 6. And from Jesus, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the head, to him who had loved us, say he loved me, and washed us, say he washed me, from my sin in his own blood. Hallelujah. Shall glory. That's the gospel of grace. Shall glory. That's the gospel of grace. But he didn't stop there. He made me. Glory to God. What did he make me to become? Kings and priests. That is the end. The gospel of grace is what he did for me. What he did in me. What he did in me. But the gospel of the kingdom is what he has made me. What did he make me? What did he make me? He made me kings. 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 Hallelujah. 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 All right. It's fine. It might be the first time you're hearing it, but it's okay. Just listen. And when you get home, go back and listen to it again. So Jesus came to restore a kingdom. See, he came to restore a kingdom. He came to restore a reign. So Jesus said in Luke chapter number 11 verse 20, he said, if I cast out devils by the finger of God, what has happened? He said, that the kingdom of God has come upon you, has come unto you. He said, if I cast out devils by the finger of God, it has come upon you. So he came to, to restore a reign. Then in Matthew, in Luke again, Luke 17, 21, he says, uh, when you ask about the kingdom, these are the activities of the kingdom, 21. 17, 21. He says the kingdom of God now is in the midst of you. Luke 17, 21. He said the kingdom of God is within you. Now, within doesn't mean inside. It means in the midst of you. It doesn't mean inside. No. Don't, don't see what he has not said. It means in the midst of you. Before, the preceding text is that it demonstrated the power of the kingdom. After demonstrating the power of the kingdom, so now the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Within. Within us. Not inside. Follow it carefully. Matthew 4, 23. And the Bible now says, Jesus went about all Galilee preaching in their synagogue, preaching the good news of the kingdom, healing all the sick, all kinds of sickness and what? Disease amongst the word people. Follow me. When you find a believer, That is miracle conscious. That is need conscious. By that need conscious, Lord, give me, give me, give me, miss me, miss me, miss me, miss me, give me, give me, give me, give me. When you find a believer that is need conscious, miracle conscious, you have found a Christian who is a king but has not known, but does not know that he's a king. You have found a Christian that is transiting in knowledge. He's still on a journey, albeit vitally to his throne though he has a throne legally you found a christian who has been washed made king but has refused to embrace that reality you know why because the weakness of his soul is still prospering within him you remember the weakness of his soul he is selfish though he has come to who to christ Is it beautiful when God meets our need? Yes. Shall we share those testimony? 100%. Yes, they are the goodness of God. But you must begin to understand that when God calls you, he calls you to give you. But when you come, he makes you. He says, come unto me and I will give you. Then when you have come, he says, follow me and I will make you. So in calling, he gives you. Those things, as it were, the appetizers, that things that attract you to him. 
But when you have come, your job should not be, your goal should not be what to get, but what you'll be made of. Or what it will make out of you. Are you following it? So the Bible says, Jesus went around preaching the good news of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. The thing I know about the kingdom is that uh, you don't talk the kingdom, you demonstrate the kingdom. You don't describe the kingdom. <laughs> uh, you describe, this is how the kingdom is. No, you show the kingdom. You manifest the kingdom. So when you find a kingdom man, when you, found, when you find a man, a believer, who has found his place as a king in Christ Jesus, who has been washed, but now he has been made. He has been made to be king. And he knows what he's talking about. He doesn't tell you stories about being a king. He shows you what it means to be a king. That's what he does. He shows you. He shows you. He shows you. So Jesus was around. You know when he says he was preaching the goodness of the kingdom, he, gave, he told you what it means. You don't preach the kingdom without and. You don't preach the kingdom without extras. He said he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. And healing all kinds of diseases. And, and prophesying. And giving clarity. And, and the goodness of the kingdom cannot stand by itself. It is demonstrated. Praise God. Demonstrated. It is demonstrated. So there was a time a man came to Jesus at night. Then there was a man called Nicodemus. Nicodemus was... Um, a Pharisee, and he was in one of the Sahindrins. By that, he means Nicodemus was, uh, it was not as it were a teacher of the law, but he was one of those that defended the law. As a Pharisee, he made sure the law was properly practiced. Are you following me? He's the kind that comes to church and says, why is your hair not covered? Are you following me? He's one that, he's the kind that comes to church and says, why? why are you in church? You are menstruating. You shouldn't be in church. That kind of church, praise God. Are you following me? He enforced the law. He's the one that looks around. On Sabbath day, he won't keep the Sabbath. They will go around checking who is eating on the Sabbath day. And when he finds somebody eating, if he likes the food, they bring it, let's share it, let's share it. And they will eat it together. Next time, don't eat on the Sabbath day. Nigerian police, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nigerian police. Praise God. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. <laughs> so the, their job is to uphold the law. Is that not what the police do? Uh huh. The same. Accurate. <laughs> so this man, having seen Jesus taught the gospel of the kingdom, he went to Jesus at night. At night, at night, he was not a friend of Jesus during the day. So he comes to Jesus, he went to Jesus at night. And I have people like that. They are not friends of Bishop Faye, but they come at night. Praise God. I have Jews that come for prophetic instructions at night. At night. But when they say Bishop Faye, is he a real prophet? We don't know. The Lord is, in these days of prophetic, we don't even know the real one and the fake one. But they come to me at night. Hallelujah. But I won't talk. They even come for impartation at night. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So he came at night. <laughs> so I understand what it means because I've been, I'm there. I understand what the Bible is saying. I can see myself. So he came to Jesus at night. Verse um, 2 and he says, um, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from what? From God. No one, no one can do this, these signs. These signs. So the kingdom comes with signs. These signs 
that you do unless God is what? With him. When he said that to Jesus, Jesus did not contradict him. He said, wow, this is awesome. What you have said is good. Right? You have discerned, I believe you would say you have discerned correctly. Then, this was Jesus' response to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was pointing to God be with a man to do those signs of the kingdom. Jesus showed him how God gets to be with a man. Are you following me? Jesus showed him how God gets to be with a man. And he said to him, Jesus answered, the word answer there means replied, and said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one, you know he said no one, right? No one, no one. So he replied, unless one, all right? No one. It means no, they must also believe that anyone can do it. If only he can have God with him. So Jesus said, no, okay, unless one is what? Born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. See is not see physically. It means experience. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he's saying that when a man is born again, there is an experience that comes with it. When a man is born again, the new birth doesn't just end there. The new birth should lead him to something, an experience of the kingdom of what? Of God. An experience of the kingdom of God. The groomer said, how can, it, how can that be? Will I have to go back into my mother's womb to be born again? Jesus said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. He said, that's not what I'm talking about. Verse 5, he says, unless you are born of water, that is the spirit. And that, in the Greek, is that is the spirit. You know, he didn't say, he didn't say unless you are born of the water. If you had given the article T-H-E to the water, it means water is a separate what? Entity. Are you following me? Can you see that? He didn't say the water. No. It will mean it's also referring to a particular water. So he says, unless one is born of water and the spirit, what I'm there in the Bible is that is the spirit. It means that unless one is born of the spirit, he cannot what? Enter the reign of God. So how do I enter the reign of God? I'm born of the spirit. How do I enter the reign of God? I have to be what? Born of the spirit. Now, if I was Nicodemus, I'm not if I was Nicodemus, I would have asked Jesus, what are you telling me? Because if he was sound enough, when did Jesus, when was Jesus born of the Spirit? Hello? I'm telling you, the things you do, they are spectacular. God must be with you to do it. You're telling me the way to do it is to be born of the Spirit. When were you born of the, that's the guy's question. But I believe maybe he was so Bamboozled with uh, all the things like, oh Lord Jesus, glory. There's some people, ah, when I see Jesus, oh my God, I will hug him. When you just see him, you're like, huh? Jesus, is it you? Then he will be surprised. Is something wrong with me? You die poor, man. You know, that kind of feeling. <laughs> so he said, unless a man is born of the Spirit. He cannot enter the reign of God. Are you following me? He cannot enter the reign of God. The reign of what's the reign of God? The reign of God is for me to live like a king. What's the reign of God? I've been made king, I should live as one. What's the reign of God? It's the same mandate that was given to Adam. God's original intent. How do I enter the reign of God? He said, I must be born of the Spirit. If I was Adam, if I was Nicodemus, I would ask Jesus, Where were you born of the Spirit? And Jesus would have replied, 
Jesus would have replied, there was a day my mother told me. She said she was in the room and the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, woman, you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. And it, the angel said to my mother that the spirit of the most high reward will overshadow you. And after that overshadowing, you will be with something. That thing shall be called a holy thing. The child of the Most High. That was the day I was born of the Spirit. Nicodemus, I was not born the way you were born. You know what Jesus was saying in this text? That that which is born of the Spirit is what? Is Spirit. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Now you can trace Jesus' audacity to his birth. You didn't hear me? You can trace Jesus' audacity to his birth. To his birth. Look at the way he spoke. Anytime I read the, I read the man, Jesus, like, ah, ah. and if I talk like this, and they will say, Bishop is proud. Hello? If you dare talk like Jesus, talk like Jesus for one week. If you're a married woman, your husband may send you out of the house. <laughs> you don't know? You don't believe me? Try it. When he, when he sends you out, don't call me. Uh -huh. I'm serious. Talk like Jesus for one week at your workplace. <laughs> your boss may fire you. <laughs> Except you are really like Jesus and you make sure he or she doesn't fire you. You know why? Because Jesus, he was asked so many questions, he gave few answers. So your boss asks, Have you dispatched the good? Thou say it to you. <laughs> Bukola, are you okay today? Thou say it, thou know it. <laughs> And you go to your boss's office, your boss will be eating. He said, give me that chicken. He said, your boss, what did you say? I said, give me that water of life. Give me that chicken. I should give him my chicken. The chicken that I have is not of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> it's not of this world. You better give me the chicken now. Do you know who accept thou of chicken? The boss will be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> HR, fire this one. I don't need this kind of stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you get to talk like Jesus for one month. Oh my God. <laughs> but when you talk like that, also when you see demons, talk like Jesus. When you see sickness, talk like Jesus. When you are confronted with a challenge, talk like Jesus. Are you following me? So what a man like Jesus. Jesus said, for a man to experience that rain, you know what? He has to be born of the Spirit. Say, I'm born of the Spirit. I'm born of the Spirit. Oh, I didn't hear you. Say, I'm born of the Spirit. I'm born of the Spirit. Say, I'm born of the Spirit. I'm born of the Spirit. So I've entered the reign of God. You're not entering. I've entered the reign of God. Ah, oh, yeah, David and ah, ah, ah. Shout glory! glory! Woo! Follow. Then what is the problem with what we hear? Well, why is it that the Christians you see don't look like the one the Bible has spoken about? In Mark, read for me, everyone. This is my last section. But he said, and he said to them, go. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He who believes. Okay. Okay. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name. They will take off servants. And they drink any deadly thing, each by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick. If we are gonna put this day, 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 day on a list, 
on the least. And we are going to deal with them superlatively. The least important there is that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But that is the one you celebrate the most. Give me him. Uh, that's the one you celebrate the most. When I'm walking in dominion, I prayed for a headache. The headache left. I'm walking in, I'm walking in dominion. That's the problem. Ah, she had malaria, she recovered. I, pray, I was not afraid for her. That's when you're celebrating. On this list, if you are going to go superlatively, that's the list on the list. It's the last on the list. How come Jesus said that um, he says, go and preach. If anyone believes and are baptized or and is baptized. Now, baptized doesn't mean, I don't want to go into theory of water and all of that. But water was not mentioned there. Uh -huh. Praise God. Are you following me? What I was on baptism in the Bible, it means different things. So if he believes and he's baptized, baptized into what? What he believed. You didn't hear me. Immersed in to be baptized means to be immersed. Don't don't think I, oh, that's what I teach you. Don't think the Bible. Don't think for the Bible. Say what the Bible has said. Don't have to eat so that you will not be judged. He says, he who believes. And is baptized. To be baptized means to be immersed. Something poured into you. To be baptized means to be indoctrinated. That's another Greek word for baptism. So he's saying that those who believe and are indoctrinated in what they have believed. So what they have believed has entered them. Are you following me? And they have entered it. Oh, yeah. You remember I enter, right? I enter. Uh -huh. Good. The God. I enter. Good. Huh? He says, those who believe. He now says to you, those who believe. He's not even talking about you, the preacher. He said, those that believe the things you have said. He said, this will be the outcome. You know why he's not talking about you, the preacher? Because he expects that that is your experience already. Are you following me? He expects that that's your experience already. So I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your boys. Nah, your boys. Oh, glory to God. Your boys. I'm talking about your boys. But today, casting out of demons is, ah, and I have grown as a believer. Ah, it's been 10 years. Now I can finally cast out demons. Abba. It's the first on the list. It will mean that there's a problem with what you have believed. It will mean that there's a problem with what you have been indoctrinated with. It will mean that there's a problem with what you have been baptized into. That's the problem. There's an error somewhere. A problem with what you have been baptized into. That's the problem. Hallelujah. So he said, those who believe and are baptized. Next verse. He says, in my name, what would they do? They will cast out demons. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will cast out demons. Then they will speak in new tongues. And they will do all of these things. You know why? Because they have entered the reign of the kingdom. They have entered the reign of the kingdom. If this is not your reality, there's something that is wrong with your theology. There's something that is wrong with what you have believed. And in these two, three days, I'm going to find them out. Praise God. I'm going to point them out. By the help of God's spirit, I will point them out. I'm a teacher sent from God. Praise God. Jesus said it, so I'm saying it too. It's not pride. I'm just, I'm just homologia. I'm just saying what he has said. Eh? It's not pride. Don't forget, forget my three pieces too. I'm not like that. <laughs> Praise Jesus. The reign of the kingdom is the goal of the gospel. It's the goal of the gospel you have, you have believed. You know, recently, I shared, I shared an account with you on a coach. Is it recently or just last week? Is it last week or two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Someone came to see me. Um, a mother and his son came to see me in church. Prophetic section. 
So they sat before me and I began to reveal the things I saw by the Spirit of God. As I reviewed, I said all the things I said. They were on their knees already shouting and wow. So I told them, bring your daughter who has been attacked. I said, bring her. I would like to see her. I'd like to pray for her. At first, the lady said, I didn't want to come. I said, okay. You want to come? Don't come. Because she's been everywhere. So she was tired. So I encouraged her. The next day she came. But before she came, she came late, or they came late. Came with her sister, her parents, and um, one other aunt and brother. They came late. But before they came late, three people came to see me in my office. They walked to my office. And they stood before me and said, oh yes, welcome. I stretch and where's the envelope? Praise God. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Where is, it? Where is the seed you have brought? You want to come and see me, Abi? Hey, sit down, I'm a prophet. I collect seed, I prophesy. <laughs> and they didn't stretch hand back at me. They said, see, that lady, they mentioned her name, don't minister to her. Leave that case. Now, this is not movie. This is not vision. This is real life story. It's not even a story. Real life account. <laughs> so don't, don't pray for her. Don't do anything. Ah. And you know me. If you know me very, I say, what? What? Who are you? What audacity? Yeah. I, I can be very confrontational. There's nobody I can look at. Except my father. There's nobody I can look at. What audacity? Tell me who not to. Did you employ me? The last I checked, I'm not on salary. Even if I'm a board of director in Irene, yeah, you, can't, you can't tell me like that because I'm not on salary. Praise God. I said, You don't tell me who to minister to and who not to minister to. Because you, don't, you didn't employ me. It's okay. No problem. They left. The people came. So I was looking at the person. He didn't want to come, Abi. He didn't want to come. Your people came here before you. They came to see me. I didn't say that first. So we went. We casted out the devil. Preach glory to God. She threw up. You don't have to throw up to cast out devils, too. I'm just telling you what happened. Threw up. Uh, all kinds of demonstration and all that. This was HIV projected into somebody's body. Not, uh, not through anything. Projected. Life is spiritual. It's not everybody that has HIV that got it through clipper. What was on your mind? It's clipper that was on my mind. Or needle. <laughs> I don't know what was on your mind. I don't know what was on your mind. <laughs> Whatever you are thinking about <laughs> I don't, what were you thinking about? <laughs> Blade. Uh -huh. okay. Hallelujah. So not everyone that has a child got it through blade or clipper. That's, that's what's on my mind. I don't know what's on my mind. So, so don't judge people. Are you, uh -huh. This was projected. Praise God. So after the ministrations and um, all of that, um, told her to go. And um, all of that. Now, that that's looks like the end of the account. So I was in my office that night. I stayed over in church to study, pray, and all of that. So during my nap time in church, in my office, in this room, I just get back. When I head back, the picture frame on the wall fell down in my office. So I woke up. I, I, what's that? How did this one? A breeze. My window, my AC was on. So windows were shut. Then a breeze was in my office. Every breeze. As if like you had like 10 industrial fans in the office. In my office. And the other boards who came down. Blah, blah. Then the one on my table went down. Blah. The microwave on the fridge 
So they were just moving everything in my office around. Like, ah. <laughs> I'm serious. So what were we doing? I just, what will you do? Shut up, Abahiata. Somebody already is doing like this. La, 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 la. Thank you for doing it on my behalf. I appreciate you. I love you with the love of God. I love you. Thank you. I appreciate you. While they were moving everything, I just stood. I was looking. They moved this one to Gaga. I was just looking. My mind was like, when you are done moving it, you will stop. So, when they were done moving, the one that fell on the little um, mat I was sleeping on, I carried it, put it back, which was the microwave, put it back. Then I started doing what? Then I slept. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how kings behave. I slept. Then I slept most soon. I don't snore, but I guess I snored that night. I slept. I slept. I said, I'm the one you want to move with. The attractions and drama and all If you get power, if you touch me. That way they move, where you don't want a demonstration. Me say I get demonstration. I used to point at people and they will fall. Like, like this, go. I can point to my people with it, it will fall. What's wrong with you? Hey, well, ah. hey, 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 he didn't get it. <laughs> he didn't get it. What is that one? You have put my boy, I'm not going to You drop your rod, you turn to a snake. I'll drop my own, you turn to a snake. My own will just swallow your own. It's simple. That one did not move. I slept. I knew they were like, ah, this guy, no fear. No. Kings aren't afraid. Not in their territory. No. I slept. When I woke up in the morning, I asked my wife, how are my boys doing? He said, they are fine. I said, that's all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the boldness. This is the confidence. This is the life that comes with the man who is born of the Spirit and either to enter the reign of the kingdom of God. You live life from here. Are you following me? Are you following me? Stand to your feet this afternoon. Glory to Jesus.